Silvio, good morning. Morning. You came from where? From Italy. From Italy? Yes. Where from Italy? From Rome. Silvio came in from Rome. Silvio, what, what do you do? Um, we are the leading uh, real estate site in Italy called Immobiliare.it, which means uh, real estate in Italian. And when you say leading, can you share with us some metrics in <coughs> Rosma? Okay, uh, so this year we will make around uh, for between 47, 46 and 48 million and a bit of uh, 20 million or uh, around uh, 11 and 20, uh, sorry, the 18 and 20. And this, this makes you one, I think, the largest independent classified real estate portal? Yes. How does it feel to be the last, the last one? I don't know. Uh, it's, uh, one of the reasons why probably we are in this situation is that uh, we launched the, this site uh, um, in 2005, where um, in most of the cases in Europe, uh, most of the real estate site has been launched in 2000. So, uh, relatively speaking, we are younger than the others. And, I mean, looking at all the countries like Germany and in, in the UK, you even have two, Rightmove and Zupla, they're both public. Yes. If you add up their market cap, you're getting to several billions. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of discussion that in Italy, which, by the way, is just a little bit uh, smaller, I think, than France in terms of its GDP, or it's quite similar. Yeah. Mm especially the northern side of Italy, mm -hmm. um, a lot of discussion has been on the pricing. Yes. And when it comes to classified, the market leader, which has pricing power, like in Germany, when Immobilien Scout doubled their price in June 2006 and did not lose one single customer, um, there's a lot of discussion around where is Italy in the stage. And I think there are mm -hmm. two players in, in, in Italy, and you are competing with Rea, Mm -hmm. which has a subsidiary called Casa IT. Yes. And you were here, I think, last year or the year before, and I think it was last year. Last year. Time, time doesn't fly sometimes, it feels like <laughs> ages. But you shared with us that you're winning against Casa. Uh -huh. And can you just share with the audience, like, yesterday we had a long discussion about capital raise and how it enables you to grow faster than your competitors. How much money did you have in Italy for Immobiliare versus Casa IT Mm -hmm. in order to compete? Um, so, in our case, it wasn't the decision to raise capital. It's simply, uh, the, the answer is very easy. Uh, we didn't find anybody giving us the money. Uh, it was strange because I was uh, my director for, from, of eBay and uh, my partner was uh, uh, general manager of eBay Italy and uh, nevertheless uh, we didn't find anybody giving us the money so we had to put our own money and this is another reason why the, the company is, not, is privately owned, let's say, okay? So uh, the f for the first two years uh, we didn't have any money and then uh, only after we had a second round but a small one. So I would say probably around between Three, four million. Three uh, to four million euros for yes, Immobiliar. Yes, four, five maximum. And your competitor, <laughs> Casa IT? Uh, the company has been bought uh, and, uh, at, uh, in, in 2007 for around 10 million or so. And, uh, and uh, they probably put around uh, 20 million or even more uh, against the company. So they lost uh, this, this amount of money in this year. They, they never made uh, any money in Italy. Uh, so they kept losing money for a lot of years. So you, you never really raised significant funds? No. You had a quarter of the funds of your competitor, mm -hmm. yet you are highly profitable now. As I, I'm a numbers guy, so it seems that the money they raised is the same size of your EBTA this year. Yes. No, I'm... So not only you outgrow them, while you outgrow them, you also make money. Why, why do you think you <clears throat> do so much better? What is it which makes an immobiliare so successful? It's, I, it's a combination of uh, some things that we have done uh, pretty well and some things that has been, been uh, done uh, pretty well from uh, our competitors. And uh, one of the problems they had is that they had uh, too much money. So when you have too much money, you tend to buy leadership. So, you, so I had a lot of experience uh, in those years uh, where they, they, they just... Uh, came to our marketing deals and said, okay, twice the money, let these guys out. Okay, you can do it once, twice, but when, when you do it 30 times, then the cost for you is very high, and then I will find other ways to get the traffic. 
That was their problem. In our case, uh, when you don't have any money, you need to get smart in uh, the way you spend it. So at the end, you have, uh, you have two big costs in a company like this, uh, which is marketing and technology. Uh, in marketing, I was uh, doing marketing for three, four years in, in uh, at eBay, so I knew everybody, I knew how to spend money efficiently, so that was, I wouldn't say easy, but easier than other uh, situation. And uh, for technology, we, we tend to spend everything, we to hire people internally, rather than extern uh, externalize uh, these developments. So that was probably the key of uh, the way we have done things. You know what I like about this conference? We're getting to conclusions. And I have heard many times from US VCs, no, no, don't have any revenues. Revenues are a distraction. Focus on growth, users, etc., but don't bother about revenues. So Silvio, who managed to grow to 20 million euros of EBITDA with quite relative small funding over a long yes. period of time, mm -hmm. he is saying, don't raise any venture capital. It's a distraction. <laughs> You have to be disciplined. Is no, I, I think uh, having too much money sometimes is, is a problem because you don't, you don't focus on things that will deliver you really a good value, but you tend to buy things. And when you buy things, you get accustomed to buy things and then you, you don't know how to do things the smarter way. And then when somebody will say, listen, now you have to put most, you generate some money, you don't know how to do it. It's very easy. So when you look at the Italian market, which is, I think, the third or fourth largest economy. I think in the early, oh, sorry, 2007, 2008, just around the time my former employer went bankrupt, which was Lehman Brothers, the number of real estate transactions in Italy were almost like a million, I think, right? No, they were around uh, 850, and then they dropped uh, uh, up, up to uh, 400,000, uh, so m mainly they, they halved. They halved. Yes, uh, in, uh, in three, four years, so it was really, really tough. And then now they are getting back uh, to, so this year, uh, and between this year and next year, they will be back at uh, 500,000. But, so, uh, we, we, will see, we see some years of growth, uh, and uh, this is the, one of the reasons why there is so big a difference between uh, our pricing and, I don't know, Germany, which is four times bigger. So the average revenues per advertiser in Italy are it's somewhere like 300 euros? Or no, 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 it's uh, 150, 60 per month, while in Germany it's like 600 or so. Yeah. And uh, in, in France probably it's around 400, 450. So and in the UK I think it's like 1,000, yeah. 200 or so. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, here the, the economy and those, I mean, you, can, you can, if you go around, you will see that they are building everywhere. So. So if, if you think about internet, and we saw that, for example, the food, directory, so food delivery, mm -hmm. every country seems to follow and end up at the same result, which is like 20% or so of the food market is delivered through internet. Mm -hmm. Delivery here will just eat, they explore these markets, opening mm -hmm. them up. In classifieds, I mean, how many real estate agents are there in Italy? Uh, let's say what we consider as an, uh, an addressable market because then there are uh, agencies that we don't, see, we don't believe that they, they will be customers, our customers anymore. Let's say that we have uh, 24,000 of which, uh, let's say, uh, 18, 19,000 are paying customers. So we are already getting to a point where uh, we are And I think there was a big win you had earlier this year or at the end of last year where you got like a, a the, group or yeah, an association. The, Can you talk about that? Uh, actually, we are working with the association since, since the beginning. We, we try to have a good uh, partnership with them. Uh, uh, probably you are referring to a big group, uh, which is Techno Casa, is, which is probably the biggest, uh, is by, by far the biggest uh, How many franchise. real estate agents are part of that? Yeah, 2,500. So it's like 10% of the number of agents, yeah, more or less, 30% yes. of the value, right? No, not 30, but let's say it's a very, very big group. And for this reason, they wanted to be independent until last year, where they, we, we, we managed to, to find an agreement, and now we, are partnership, like, we have a partnership like with the others, like all the franchising groups. But uh, Technocasa is so big in Italy that uh, makes a difference. So, and if you look at the future of Immobiliare, how, how, can you say something about the market share today of Immobiliare versus Casa? I think Casa is giving the numbers 
public in terms of revenues and you're so kind to share well, a little bit of data with us. Uh, so we, we think, uh, uh, so this year we will make around 46 to 47, 48, they will make around 20 something, 22, so 20. The size. Yes, while uh, they don't make any money, they never make money, so they are break even, more or less. Uh, and, uh, and the third company in Italy makes uh, between uh, three, two, two, three, four million. So you have, you have a competitor who's half your size, mm. they have a big group behind them, mm -hmm. and they can afford to lose money. How, how do you compete in a situation like that? The market is coming back up, the real estate transactions are growing, and many of the companies here, they think about pricing. Mm -hmm. And when you think about pricing, you need to think about profits today versus land grabbing, taking the market, real estate agency penetration. Are you planning to, to, to raise prices or you're just growing with the market and delivering more leads to your customers? Uh, I think uh, the rising the price is part of the, the strategy uh, to grow the business over time because we are delivering a lot of value at the end. So the, the, the overall uh, um, say value of commissions in Italy each year is around two billion. Two billion? So, two billion. So and you get 40 40, million, 40, 40, say 50, around 50, 50 million. 50 million out of that. So, I mean, we are talking about like a, a, a huge uh, potential, let's say, no? And interestingly, I mean, if you, I mean, when we are analyzing as bankers markets, we always, always look at the underlying economics of an industry. And I think real estate and agency, how much do they charge in Italy as a commission? Uh, I would say around uh, two, between two and three for uh, a seller and for the buyer. So between four and five That's overall. three times the amount they pay in this country. <laughs> yeah, I know. But it is also true that in Italy only, let's say, 55% of the transactions are going through the agencies. So what we hope and, and believe will happen in the future is that the number of transactions done through agencies will grow and maybe, hopefully, the, the percentage of uh, uh, value they will get is lower, okay? Because then it's better to have more transactions through agencies and lower, uh, lower margin, because then people will get used to this kind of uh, um, ways. Okay, now if you look at France, we mm. like to look at France, it's a beautiful country, as beautiful as Italy, sometimes. <laughs> uh, often we think about Shipstead, and yes. we, have, we have Rolf, the CEO from Shipstead, presenting later. Um, they, they started this company, Le Bouquin, mm -hmm. which is a general classified portal, mm -hmm. which has been a hugely successful marketplace. And they are known to take market share in real estate from the Immobiliare equivalent of France, which is so mm -hmm. And I asked you one day, what happened in France that Le Bouquin is eating into the classified market of Cé Is this something you see happening in Italy? Because in Italy, I believe, they also have a general classified mm -hmm. company yes. called Subito. Now, it may help that the founder of Immobiliare comes from eBay and knows a lot about mm -hmm. kind of marketplaces and classifieds, but can you share with the audience what the main difference is between your approach and the approach of C. Um, hmm, it's a long discussion, but let's say... It's fine, uh, we have a minute <laughs> left. Okay, <laughs> no, I know. So, uh, uh, let's say in a nutshell, I think uh, uh, Sologer had some uh, constraint. They had to generate uh, uh, a lot of uh, BDA, uh, so they couldn't invest uh, enough probably in the company. This is one of the reasons. And also on the other side, uh, Le Bonquin Ships has, has done a very good job in, uh, in, in, uh, in uh, attacking the category. Uh, but I don't believe there's a, uh, I'll say, that the horizontal have a, a huge uh, uh, or have any um, advantage compa compared to the verticals. I think in general, uh, horizontal tend to win where the verticals lose. So we but will I, try not to lose. Well, isn't the situation that in, in France, Cilogie doesn't allow private... Yeah, that's, that's probably one of the biggest reasons. Because... Uh, no uh, private listings it, there. Yeah, we said before that in, in, in UK, probably you have uh, 90, around 90% 90 of transactions going through the agencies. In Italy, it's around 55. In Spain, in France, it's around 
75 or so. Uh, so they have uh, 25 of transactions through uh, private, and they didn't allow private to be on their site, and people will find their way. And in, in France, there was a, a site called, uh, still, still today, is Particulier Particulier, which is between private and, uh, and uh, but for, these, for the reason that uh, private couldn't find uh, any, any, any listing uh, for, uh, between private in, in on Seleger, they will find they, they found an, an, another way for them, which was Le Bon Coin. And this is one of the reasons why we launched uh, the private on our site uh, for free, not because we want to push this kind of market, of course. You, you control your own cannibalization? Yes, that's the point. So yesterday we learned a lot about from the gaming companies, like we had Ricardo from King.com, we had uh, Branco from Nordis, which are some of the largest gaming businesses of Europe, and both of them said, you really have to listen to the user. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter to develop games which don't work for the user or are not accepted. We had Vintage, which is one of the fund of funds in Europe. They invested in, indirectly in 500 different VC funds. And they said the most common mistake they see with startups is not focusing on the customer. So as a marketplace needs to add value to the one who wants to buy a house or rent a flat or anything of the above, <clears throat> it's important to create value to them by having transparency and all offers on the market. And that includes the private listings. Yes, that was the, the, one of the key reasons why. So we, uh, at the beginning, uh, as, a, as a private, you, you should have paid to post a, a listing on our site. And then uh, some years ago, we decided to let it free because we wanted to have those listings on our site. Uh, so you, you have to know, you cannot uh, uh, make uh, these changes to a market. If you, the, the market uh, underneath, below, is, is, uh, is, is, uh, is done in a, in a certain way, you, you cannot change it. You have to adapt. You, so you have to listen to your customer. You know, one thing we pride ourselves of having European winners on stage, but there are not many I know who have not raised any substantial capital, who have a strong competitor in the market with big funds. And then the, the most important aspect, and that's the most astonishing thing about Immobiliare, it's like a super small team. Can you talk about the senior management? Ah. Okay, we have uh, 200 people, more or less. Uh, we have two offices, one is in Rome, the other one is in Milan. Uh, well, the, the commercial part is in, mainly in Milan. Uh, part of the, 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 say the, the head of the uh, commercial and CEO is Carlo Giordano, which is a, our CEO. He started from the beginning. Uh, and we have probably two, three, four maximum senior people in Milan. And in, in Rome, we have uh, maybe two, three. And I want to tell you a quick story, and, and, and then we uh, one, Sorry, one of the reasons is that at the beginning, we couldn't afford to hire senior people. And then they just got used to work hard all the time. Yes. And when <laughs> I visited their office in uh, Milano, I noticed that it's like, a, it, it's like a floor, it's like a trading floor of Goldman Sachs selling bonds and equities. There are like hundreds of people sitting with telephones. And I asked if you... I mean, I get this kind of productivity stuff and very organized, but tell me, why are there mirrors next um. to the computer screen? Oh, on the computer screen, you have mirrors. I mean, I'm vain, but I don't, I don't have a mirror on my computer. Can you tell um, the audience what the mirrors <clears throat> had on the, itself? Actually, this is uh, something that is asked by our CEO, Carlo, who has uh, an experience in, in commercial. And the reason he tells me is that uh, when, you call, when you call a customer, you have to, to behave and to, 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 to be presented uh, as, you, as you are meeting uh, this person in, in person. So you, you, you need to, 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 to know the way you are looking, because the way you are looking is the way you are speaking. I mean, there are little things you can learn from everyone, and I'm, I'm, I'm very happy Silvio shares some of, I mean, there are the results, but then there's the way to get there, and it's, it's a lot of hard work, discipline, and continued what was set out from the beginning. I mean, the way you guys execute in Italy is highly impressive, and I'm sure there have been a lot of temptations on the way of big international classified business to acquire Immobiliare, but you guys are super disciplined and continue what you're doing. Tell us, 
what, what is the future you are interested in for Immobiliare and, and yourself? <clears throat> uh, first of all, I think the, uh, the way I, I see it, there is no better job than what we are doing, for us at least, uh, on a personal level. So you that, like what you're doing? Yes, so I don't see why should I sell the company and to do what, basically, no? Uh, so but you, you don't know how to spend money as a company if you raise now a lot. <laughs> yes, it would that, be a challenge, right? You would need to get used to a different way. Yes, so I, I like the way I live. That's uh, a wonderful problem to have. <clears throat> uh, so, but the point is that the way I see it, uh, we are at the end of uh, online real estate uh, 1.0. And uh, if you look at it uh, in a different way, we are just the beginning of a second, way, uh, second wave of uh, real estate. And the se this second wave will focus on uh, categories. So, I don't know, in the US there's a lot of uh, buzz around uh, rentals and there's uh, a lot of uh, new homes. So in some ways, when you ask about uh, the horizontal, I believe in 10 years, we are now the horizontal of real estate. So I believe that the future will be in niche sites for specific categories. So now we see, for example, vacation rental, and maybe five years ago, you couldn't expect uh, that uh, a company like uh, Airbnb could have been so successful in this way. So, Home away, for example, have been successful at, the, at, the, at this stage. So I believe in the, in the next wave of the next five years to ten years, we will, I believe that these new niche categories in real estate will emerge. That's the way I see it. So since we, have, we like to be in Italy, we like to do what we do. So our second part of our story will be in focusing on delivering a good service or niche for niche Categories. One of the reasons Silogier, I believe, does not allow private listings is they don't want to give the agents the impression that they're not their friends because they want to support their business indirectly. So if they want to support the agents, they shouldn't let the people on the platform who are not working with the agents to the disadvantage of the person looking for an apartment or house to buy or to rent. Now. If you look at your job as a real estate portal, and you have two customers. You have the one who wants to sell and rent the house mm -hmm. or to buy, and then you have the one who's making money with the overall need of getting people moved from A to B. Mm -hmm. Now, with internet, we always think about disruption, and the newspaper industry got disrupted with real estate portals, mm -hmm. and I believe in countries like Germany or the UK, they used to spend on newspapers a billion dollars or a billion pounds and then you guys came along the, the market collapsed and slowly now the online piece is growing and growing yes. back to the original market mm -hmm. size there was a bit of a recession in between which which was a problem for all of us my company went bankrupt i used to work for lehman but i mean you have do you think, it pretty well no? and, and, and that's the last question <laughs> do you think for you and for the industry there's a way to use the internet your platforms to disintermediate the agent, or is that a difficult game and you're, you're loyal to your paying customers? Um, honestly, I don't see now uh, a future where the agents will be uh, dis disintermediated. Uh, so we are, we are trying to work the, the hard we can with the agents in order to work together for the future. Uh, it is also true that, uh, uh, as I said, we are probably at the beginning of a second wave of uh, uh, disruption. And so there will be some company trying to, to change things. Uh, uh, for example, I see in the UK you have, there's a purple bricks. There are some companies trying to do things differently. So we will see the, what will uh, emerge. Uh, but, uh, and also, uh, I, I believe that the, 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 the way agents are working right now is going to be somehow different from what the way we will work in, in five years. But I don't see a future where the agents will not part of the game. You know, Auto One, which is like a multi-billion dollar valued startup from Germany, they were yesterday on stage, they're buying cars yeah. and they, <coughs> they sell them to the dealers and they have taken a, a pretty strong position. It will be interesting to see if the real estate market will have a similar one. I guess somebody still needs to show the mm -hmm. apartment, right? The, the point is that uh, I used to work in, the, in Fiat, I used to work in the, I'm a mechanical engineer, so I know somehow a bit uh, of the car business. And uh, while the cars are more or less, more or less all the same, so you know, 
uh, the, all, all the stuff. Uh, so somehow you can, you can define the process. All the houses are different. If uh, in, a, in, a, in a palace you have a first floor which is different from the fifth, fifth floor. So I don't believe there's a, a way now to standardize the value and to, to, to standardize the process. So I, that's the reason why I don't believe there's a future at least in the next 10 years where the agents are not going to be part of the game. Silvio, thank you so much for sharing some of your insights, your story. I think it's very refreshing to hear that there are companies making it without raising these mega rounds. We mm -hmm. always reading in the press and get astonished and scratch our heads. How do they do it? There are some people who get to a high market position and significant size by just hard work and a little bit more creative uh, ways. And in Italy, which is not like the front runner of, Itali of internet in Europe, you can build big companies. And I love your discipline and your vision. Thank you so much Thank you. for being with us.